Sal and Turnado here for Black Knight Nation. Um, we're doing these Black Knight Nation reboots, we're calling them for now. We're uh, talking to former Army players. This is Army-Navy week, the biggest week of the season for the program. And here we have Demetrius Perry. Demetrius, thanks for giving us your time. No problem. I'm enjoying being here. Yeah, uh, Demetrius and I talked way back in 2012. I just pulled up a story that I wrote um, about Demetrius and Demetrius scored the go-ahead touchdown in the 1996 Army-Navy game. It was a victory for the Black Knights. I think then they were still called the Cadets back then, Demetrius, but I, I don't think the Black Knights. Uh, talk to me a little bit about that experience and what it was like. What's it like playing in an Army-Navy game? I, I haven't played in the Super Bowl, but I, I see the hype and everything that's associated with it. I'm going to tell you, you know, the Army-Navy game is at that level. Coming down the tunnel, I mean, even before you even get to the game, just pre pre game week, uh, the the things that go on down at the core, the energy, the vibe of you know, we've said beat Navy for you know however many weeks since the the the, the plebes come into the new class, and now it's here and the energy's up. You got spirit missions. You got uh, you know, uh, every, before we start every lecture, there's a beat Navy you know. Uh, uh, banner or something that the, the instructors are start with. We, we talk that 15 minutes before we get into whatever the lesson is. It, it, it is a big deal. And then all of a sudden game day come, there's nothing that matches it. You know, when you're talking the, the aircraft that fly over and, and, and the, the, the stands that are packed and it doesn't matter the weather, it can be 15 below pouring down raining. It's going to be jam packed, whatever stadium that we decide to, to be in, which is unfortunate about this year, you know, that that's going to be weird, but my experience is you know, like the crowd rocking and rolling and, and it's weird, you know, some, some, some robbery games, listen, when they do it, they don't do it at a neutral site, you know, you'll have all of one or all of the other. So on, on a play, if it's a good play, you may hear some noise or if it's a, you know, a, a, a poor play um, for the other team, you know, you, it, it, the, the crowd may go back and forth, but the army Navy game, every single play gets every single fan involved. It's, it's the coolest thing you can ever be a part of. Yeah, I remember, like, when I'm covering the games, you're in an elevator going down for the fourth quarter, and you can you know what, what direction the game is going in from the cheers and who has the ball. You're right. Mm -hmm. And last year, I was lucky enough to experience the game on the field for the, for the entire game. And it, 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 was, it didn't go Army's way, but it's still, you're right, it's an incredible experience just to, to, to be on the field and, and just feel the um, – the passion of the players, you, you, you just get that, that vibe. Um, what do you remember the most about that 1996 game? And, and what did it really, can you even describe the emotions? I, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's still one of your fondest memories as an army football it's player. It's one of my fondest memories. I think oh, if you look at the TV, the CBS broadcast of it, you know, I forget who was calling the game, but it, you know, when he scored a touchdown, he's like, he's going to remember that the rest of his life. I remember that play every single day that I wake up. I think that I'm going in for the go ahead touchdown against Navy, but to me, it's even bigger than, you know, just the individual plays because we had a situation where we had um, a number of good players in my position. And, you know, with, it's, it's weird because we didn't have the access that the cadets have now to what the, the, the media uh, is, is, is portraying everything. And so inside our locker room, inside, you know, our huddle, what we knew was me and Joe were co-starters. And depending on what kind of game we were going to play, whether it was going to be more of a double option game or more of a triple option game, or if we were going to go more of a straight fullback dive kind of game uh, or, or zone, it, that, that determined who was going to start, me or Joe. And, but it didn't really matter who started because generally speaking, we would get roughly the same amount of reps. And so, you know, you, you knew you were going to play. It didn't matter who started. You were going to get some, you know, get a lot of reps. We split the reps. But the Air Force game that year, remember we came in, I think it was 8-0 or 9-0. I can't remember what the numbers were, but we were undefeated going into the Air Force game, regional coverage, bowl game. Everything's, on, everything's still ahead of us. Uh, and Joe was just on fire. Yeah, I don't know if you, if you go back and look at that tape. There's a touchdown Joe scored. He literally jumped from the five-yard line over a pile and scored. on a. He was on fire. So we ran with the guy that was, that was hot. And so, you know, Joe got all of those reps. I think I came in for like the last series of the game to get a first down to, to be able to kill the clock. So what happened was it's a game time decision on who's going to start. 
you know, when, as we're coming down the tunnel, the coaches, the, you know, our fullback coach will let us know, all right, don't, you know, Joe D, we're going to go with Joe to start, but D stay loose. All right, well, for the Navy game, you know, we both prepare all week. We don't know who's going to start. We come down the tunnel. Um, and, and I, I mentioned the media earlier because in, when I go back and look at the media reports now, Joe was always the starter. <laughs> but in our locker room, it was a, you know, game time decision every game. So sure enough, coming down the tunnel for Navy game, uh, hey, D, Joe, uh, we're going to go with Joe to start the game. You know, we're going to run it pretty much like the Air Force game. Oh, that was kind of deflating to me because <laughs> the Air Force game, if we're going to run it like that, that means Joe's got to play the whole game. And I love Joe. Joe's my brother, but I yeah. want to play. <laughs> and so, but if we're going to play it like the Air Force game, then that means I'm – so now my my focus kind of changed. Now I'm really sucking up the 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 – the 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 flavor of the game, the energy of the game. I'm 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 not even focused on the field. I'm turned around, directing the band, getting in with the cheer, whatever the cheers are going on, and you know, just I know I'm not going to get that many reps, but I'm gonna do whatever I can to keep this crowd pumping, and we're gonna get after it. And all of a sudden, I D, get in there! Whoa, 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 wait, wait a minute. I'm I'm confused. We didn't. Even, I think we made it a series and a half. We may even made two series, and Joe got dinged up with a knee injury. I had to play the rest of that game at fullback mm. by myself. <laughs> well, I don't know if that's 60 reps. We probably can go back and count them, but we usually average about 60, 75 reps a game. And we only ran about, you know, let's call it 15, 20 reps. That means I got to go 60 reps by myself the rest of the game. And, and people don't realize you know, at the college level, there's Line, line of scrimmage calls, there's checks and things that, that are coming in from the sidelines that coaches are yelling out to you. Um, you know, the line, the line is making specific line calls that as the fullback that I got to be aware of the call that they're making. Ronnie McAdoo, he's a quarterback, he's making calls. You know, and then you have to see with your own eyes, you know, your alignment assignment and position. You got to know what's going on for yourself with 65,000 people yelling as loud as they can and you can't hear. I mean, and you, so you got to be I mean, super focused on that snap count, super focused on out of, out of 65,000 voices, I got to be able to hear Ronnie. And you got to do that for 60 to 70 something reps in a game. That is mentally draining, mentally draining. So yeah, I, I remember the game and, and being and, 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 and all the stuff that happened afterward with the president down on the field and getting the trophy. But if you, if you can look at the film, You'll see, I'm just kind of standing there like, I'm, I'm drained. Just, just mentally and physically just drained. I, I'm excited. I have a lot of emotion, but I'm, I'm more drained than anything. And that's what I remember the most, just being just completely out of gas. There was nothing. In fact, wow. if you watch the tape. We got the ball. You know, we had a goal line stand, and then we got the ball back. And we, we should have been able to kind of run the clock out there. I could barely get back to the line of scrimmage on some of those dive plays. And so, of course, we didn't get the first down. We gave them ball, and so defense had to hold again. So that's kind of yeah. what I remember from that Navy game. Crazy. Uh, what, was the, can you, what was the locker room like after a game like that? It must, it must be crazy. It's one of the coolest things because as cadets, we get a, a lot of senior officers and, 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 and military leadership and civilian leadership, sec def, all those kind of people, people that, you know, if you're in the army 20 or 30 years, you may get them to come to your unit once or twice in your career where, you know, we see these guys at least every year for army Navy, but we see them, you know, a few times throughout the year and they know you by name. D what's up, man. You know, you got sec def general uh, Sullivan, uh, they're tossing out coins and it's just, it's a riot in there. You know, and we're, we're all fired up. We're all jacked up. Cause at that time, I think that was four in a row or that may have been five in a row. I think that was five in a row, mm -hmm. five in a row. And, and you know, every, it doesn't matter what coach said. I don't know what coach said. Coach got, you know, he stands in the middle and says whatever he says, but you know, every three words, rah, yeah. uh, and, and we went out and we executed and we did what it doesn't really matter what he said. You know, we're, we're all fired up. We're jacked up. And then in that year, we had the, the identification tags, the dog tags. And, you know, we play for each other. So mm -hmm. now I want my ID tags. And I keep in my wallet to this very day. I'll pull them out for you if you want to see them in a second. But I keep those ID tags in my wallet. 
because um, um, I played Garland Gay had mine, and I'm not sure. No, I had Garland's, but I'm not sure who had mine. But some kind of way, you know, we're all running around trying to get our ID tag back because we had our numbers on it from the game, December sixth, uh, December seventh, nineteen ninety six, and our, your your jersey number. And so we're kind of running around trying wow. to get our, our ID tags back. Some guys got them, some guys didn't. And then I get pull and go out to do media. Hmm. It, it, it's amazing, right? What did, what this game means to so many people. And look, like that game for you is more than. You know, it's about what twenty four years ago, and you still had that memory in your wallet that you'll refer, that you keep with you, and um, it, it's just incredible. What I mean, it, it's hard for me to put into words. I've covered uh, you know more than a dozen of the, the Army Navy games, but when people ask me like what it's like to cover the team and what what it's like to cover this game, it, it's it's just a true honor to to see how there's a, you can't compare the rivalry to any anything in college uh, football. I don't think. Mm-hmm. And then that's the other thing, though. So after all of that excitement, after, you know, we've gone completely berserk, then the, the, the realization sets in for the seniors. Like, this is my last football game. And, well, that year we were fortunate enough to go to a bowl game, but still, that was it. I'm not going to get a chance yeah. to play in Mikey anymore. You know, brothers, this, this is the last one. And we did it, but this is it. And then all of a sudden you, you jump right into, okay, well, next uh, Monday we got a uh, strength and conditioning. We're already into the next season. Yeah. We might watch yeah, the film. Great. We might not. It, it, I can't remember if we watched it every year or not, but it was really, okay, now that that's done, you know, we'll spend the night in Philly and run around with that. But seriously, Monday morning, we're already back into the next season. Hmm. Do you keep the – um? That, that 96 game on your DVR, do you watch it a lot during the year or do, do you wait until around Army Navy week to, to put to watch it over? Or do you have to watch it over again because it's probably in your mind? So. I, I know it, but also, you know, I have, you know, let me show you. Let me see if I can pull it up. I'm in my office. I got stuff like this. Okay. Yep. Sure. I mean, I mean, and you see how fast I, I didn't prepare for this interview. <laughs> that, that sits yeah. me all the time. Uh, I have another book. So I have a little book here with like all old stuff. I don't know if you can see it. Oh, wow. But the 96 yep. highlight film narrated by uh, Steve Sable. Uh, the 94 Army Navy game. Uh, Army Arbor 96. So, yeah, I, I keep them on DVD. I've burned them all to my hard drives. I pull them up. I revamp them and make new highlight films and, and, and post stuff on YouTube just about every chance I get. And people are like, why don't you just let it go, man? That was 25 years ago. Hey, you don't understand. You just don't understand. And the, when we talked, we uh, I just wanted to get to the little bit about once your, once your uh, football career is over at West Point, then, then your service time and what it's like when you're serving to watch, like to watch the game, or you know, follow the game when you're serving. Do you have any stories about that that you know that you'll remember, like certain memories a, or of, of that, like watching the game? So it's it's interesting because a lot of us assume that Army team is the Army team, but that's not necessarily the case when you actually get on the ground. There are some people that have never heard, you know, when, when you're out serving, there's some soldiers that have never really heard of the army team. There's some soldiers that think it's just some, you know, intramural guys that, you know, from the army and, and they get together and go play Navy every year. And then there's the crew that they, they're smart. They, 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 they keep up with what's going on in the world. They know what the army team's all about. And, but they don't really recognize that those guys that were on the field could be your, you know, platoon leader, battery commander, you know, battalion S3. So there are times when I'm standing around with some bunch of soldiers and, and they may or may not have heard that I played at Army, but it doesn't really register. But when I was a junior officer, that was around the time during the streak and, and we weren't doing so hot. And a bunch of soldiers were just standing around talking. They didn't realize who I was. They were just standing around talking about, hey, man, you know, what's going, what are we going to do this weekend? Well, there's a football game on, you know, cause, and this was in Korea. You know, AFN is yeah. going to... Man, I wish they would show the SEC game because they, they got somebody, they got Army playing, and we, I don't want to see them. In fact, you know, who's when the other guy was like, well, who are they playing? He's like, you know, he didn't say, he said, who they're going to lose to this week? Uh, University of Phoenix online? 
Oh wow. I about lost it. And usually and I usually have on my bow ring. My hands are swollen right now, so I don't have my rings, but I usually have my independence bow ring on and my class ring. And then I had to kind of pop out and give them a lesson about, you know, the army team is something very, very special to me. You do yeah. not insult the army team ever, especially in my presence. <laughs> so, <laughs> the, so that that's one memory. It, but yeah, it, it's just fun. I, I love the team and I, you know, it's, it's one of those things like there's some people that team hop. They, they, whatever, wherever they have the number one team, that's their team this year. You know, if, if Ohio State is, is winning, you know, I'm a, a JT Barrett fan. And, and you come back, you know, if Jalen Hurts is getting after the Alabama, now they have a Jalen Hurts jersey. I wear Army stuff just about every day of my life. Now, and it's funny because I'm starting to brand with my son. My son has his brand coming out and we, we're doing apparel and all kind of stuff. And I now I'm torn because this is what I wear. Mm -hmm. This is, yes. what I, this, is my, this is my fashion, you know, and whatever, I, I have every brand, you know, I, I fight it just like everybody else. Why are we rebranding? Why are we rebranding? I like that, you know, I, I like the old one, the classic A with the mule. That's what I like. Why are we going to this army phantom looking dude? Okay, well, I got a bunch of that. And then all of a sudden they're changing it to something else. And then, you know, like, well, I have it all. <laughs> that, wow. That's what it means to me. Do you have the um the, the do you have any army navy the army uh, jerseys from the navy game? Do you have any of that stuff or no? Yep, got my navy jerseys uh with the patches of the units that are rep represented. I have all of this stuff because what happens when you represent those different units? Some of those commanding generals, the CGs, will send you letters, and so I have all of those letters. Uh, I'm I'm an army memorabilia collecting dude, so. I, it, I mean, last night I pulled out the two, you know, we, the, the core wears army Navy shirts every year. And we all get one uh, long sleeve shirt. Uh, I think one year we tried a short sleeve shirt. That was dumb, but I have all of those. I mean, that's, that stuff is super special to me. So I don't wait till Navy work yeah. week. It's just an all, all year round. Yeah. I, I, you know, just thinking now that that 96 team is a really obviously a, was a special season. It's one of the, the best teams uh, record wise and just performance wise that Army's had in, in its, in its re, you know, recent history. Um, what was what was it about that team that made it special? What was it about that? You know, those, the players that made that team special and, you know, for the season you had into that Independence Bowl game where you're taking, you know, all burned down to the to, to the very end. What what people don't realize is the '96 team was really made by the '95 team. What happened was when we went into the '95 season, Coach Sutton uh, was kind of in a contract deal there, and they were they were, they were saying that you know if we didn't have a good season, that you know we would probably lose Coach. And the captains Joel Davis and Jim Cantaloupe, we had a team players only meeting, and they walked in the meeting. And they, they talked about, you know, hey, if we don't have a good season, coach might get fired. And they basically said, I don't care about coach. I don't care about, you know, a lot of different things. If coach gets fired, that means we didn't play well. That means we didn't get it done. And they basically, I'll be, dag I'll be damned if my senior year, I go out and my coach gets fired because we didn't play well. So today, you need to decide, are you with us or you're not with us? We run the bear defense. We run the wishbone. If you don't like those things, get out. We don't want you on our team. Hmm. We don't give a crap what you think about the bear defense or what you think about the wishbone, whether it works or doesn't work. That's what we run. That's what the coaches are putting out there. You don't like it, get out. And we lost some guys. And then they also, they also went to coach and said, coach, we got too many people. You know, I think we were running 200, 250. I don't know how many. It was a bunch of us. But, hey, coach, we need to trim wow. down. Cut, cut, cut all the dead weight. All these guys that are just hanging around just to be, have Army football paraphernalia, get rid of them. And coach said, hey, you know, if we do that, you know, a lot of good guys, you know, your homies, your buddies might get cut. We don't care. Make it happen. So we trimmed the team down. And that year we went 5-5-1. Five, five, and one losing, I think, three games within the last seconds of the game. That Notre Dame game, we got stopped on the uh, goal line there. We, we 76,125. I know it just like it was uh, uh, yesterday over in Washington. We couldn't hear. We didn't have a signal system in. We knew we practiced with crowd noise. 
we knew it would be loud. Uh, they had a band day or something, uh, but we never anticipated that there would ever be anything louder than the crowd noise that we practice with. I don't know if you ever heard that block that kick, but it's annoying. I don't think like, how can any crowd ever be louder than this? But it was, and we got caught on the goal line without a signal system and time ran out on us because we couldn't get a play call. Able to beat Washington. Um, we tied Rice, which was, you know, that was kind of a letdown. What was another game that year? But the, the games, we so the 95 season, those, those games were really close. And, you know, now we finished up the 95 season. We come in, and it's the same thing. Players only meeting. I think Ron Lasinski uh, uh, and who else? Probably Ronnie Mack, maybe Ben Kawika. I can't remember who. And Ron Thomas, I think, was remember leading the, the team meeting. Um, and the team meeting was like, look at this schedule coming into the 96 season. You know, coach, we kept coach. And then it was like, well, look at this schedule. Who on here can beat us? And we all were scratching our heads like, you know, yeah, this schedule, you know, we can beat everybody on this schedule. And so we started trying to develop, well, what are our goals? You know, what, what do we want to do? You know, undefeated, you know, everybody writes it down. We want to go undefeated at home, go undefeated because nobody can beat us on this schedule. And like, well, no, but if we do that and say we lose one game, was our season successful? What, did we have a good program? Yeah, you know, what, what, what happens if we don't achieve the goal of being undefeated? All right, all right, go back to the drum board. So that, that process of putting together our team goals and, and really, you know, coming from the, because we'd already kind of stripped all the dead weight out the year before. So now we got a good group of guys that, you know, want to compete, want to be the best. And we look at the schedule and we think we can beat everybody on that schedule. You know, there wasn't any of the, the names on there that, you know, typically kind of, you know, we got to really be up for this game. We really got to come in with our best. No, we're like we can beat every team on this schedule. Uh, there, there's nobody on there that can beat us. And so we, we worked it, we worked it, and we kind of bonded together and we ended up coming up with the 1-0 each week. 1-0 each week. And that was our rally cry. It didn't matter what, 1-0. We were 1-0 on every single rep in practice, running 0 you know, even cleaning our locker room. You know, one we have to go one and zero every single day. With you know, clap your cleats outside on the little thingies that the little rubber things that you get your cleats clean with. Don't bring that in the locker room. You know, have some some pride about how you set up your 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 locker in the locker room. Organize things, and 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 and, and then it was just come right. I mean, oh yeah, don't even get me talking about the locker room because that that's a a sanctuary. That's a heaven for. You know, your, your battle buddies, I mean, we throw cold uh, shampoo on each other, uh, icy hot in the jock straps. It, it, the offensive linemen against the, the, the D line and the backs against the, uh, the, the linebackers. But just camaraderie, everybody is bought in. There's no brotherhood like it. And it was the strongest that, I, you know, that I'd ever witnessed in that 96 season uh, and leading up into it and then all the way through it. Everybody Sounds like a little yeah, it sounds like a little bit like this year's team with everything that's gone on. You know, I don't know. You know, the schedule was in flux too. They, of course, they they're not playing the the teams that were on the original schedule. But you look at this team. I mean, I don't know. If, oh, who knows what was expected out of this team this year? And they've been able to win. They've been able to win seven games, right? And now they head into this really key three uh, game stretch with you know a chance to really, if they can run the table, to really have another special season during these times. Um, what what are you, what are your thoughts just on you know you mentioned it earlier about playing this game at Mikey Stadium, um, you know I mean of course you, we talked about how they you moved it around Philadelphia has mostly the, been the home for this game for the majority of the of the rivalry but what you, how you how you think you'll be uh, viewing the how you think you'll, the viewing experience will be or just the, the setting will be at Mikey Stadium on Saturday. So got a couple things going on. The 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 first thing is. I appreciate and love the way Coach Munkin leads the team. He he fully embraces the academy. He fully embraces Army football. He, I mean, he one of the first things he did when he came on and said, hey, I need – because I don't want to talk bad about a, a previous staff, but I, I, I talked mm -hmm. to a previous staff, and I was like, hey, I want to be involved. I want to be connected. I, I want to be around the, you know, the, the team. And he's like, we don't need guys like you. You guys are too old. We don't need you. <laughs> But one of the first things Coach Munkin did, he says, hey, I want you guys connected. I want you, you know, find a guy with your jersey number and hook up with him. And so everybody that's won 23, and, you know, since Coach Munkin's been around, 
you know, they're my social media buddies and, you know, I, I got their phone numbers. I, I'll, I'll hit them up and, and let them know, hey, man, you know, thinking about you today, you know, you wearing 23, way to represent out there. Because as, as long as 23 is on the field, I'm on the field. <laughs> I'm connected. Mm. And, and yep. so he, he really embraces the culture and, and the brotherhood. And, he, and he, bring, he brought back a lot of the symbols, the Ranger Club, the, 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 the Black Death flag, you know, all of the things that tie all of us old guys. I mean, I'm 20 years removed now. You know, it ties me back to the program. I'm connected. I'm in this fight with these guys, you know, you know, and then social media helps bring all of that, you know, to us as well. So, you know, we, we get what's going on in the locker room. You know, I will fight till I can't fight anymore. Yeah, I'm in there with those guys doing that cheer. You know, Coach Munkin has really brought us all back in and, and brought us to, together. And so we're all part of this and we're all, you know, we're all connected. And, and so, and then with that brotherhood, I mean, cause you know, when you're there, you always talk, you know, you represent something way bigger than just this team. You know, you know, we fight for each other. We don't, we, you know, we're not really doing this for everybody else, but understand you're connected to something way bigger. You're connected to a brotherhood that goes way, way, way back. And, uh, you know, I, I, I never forget, you know, like Brigadier General Dawkins come down on the field and shake hands pregame, you know, and, uh, 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 or Colonel Sassaman or uh, Colonel Pavic, you know, all those guys that were grad assistants and, and people around the program, uh, uh, Captain Stresserman when he was there, you know, the, you know, you get used to all of those guys just being around and, and, and that's special. And so, you know, I'm, I'm just a part of this team as I was the 96 team. You know, mm-hmm. I, I, sometimes I'll be like, Coach Vita, can you put me in? And I, I know I got like six guys ahead of me, but can I play today? <laughs> like, you know, I, I know all of those guys in my position. You know Buchanan and 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 Anthony Atkins and and uh, uh, who else gets in there? Yeah, just like the, Shannon I'm, McCoy. Yeah, yeah, Shannon. Yeah, you know I'm hey, I'm Bernard. connected to those dudes. Those yeah. are my homies. You know, like I feel like I'm still 18, 19. Her, I don't know what how old was I when I was back then. <laughs> you know, I still <laughs> feel like I'm 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 playing Mikey in the locker room with those guys because the connectivity we have. And Coach Munkin has invited that. And so, you know, on, on game day, you know, now I got an issue because my boy plays, a, they're playing a state championship, AAU state championship football game uh, this weekend. And so oh boy. I'll, I'll be out on, on that field. And so that's one of my challenges I've had over the last few years since my boy's been playing. And he's played, you know, they play on Saturdays, uh, youth sports here in Texas. And, you know, I have me even, I, there was a while where if, if I could drive to the game, because uh, I live here in Texas, down in Fort Hood area, clean. If I could drive, uh, I think as far as I've driven is to, to Arkansas State, but I've driven to Memphis, I've driven to, if, if I can get there, I'll get to the game. But since my boy, mm-hmm. Japan, I haven't been able to catch the game. So, and, and, and then I do video, I do media for the, my youth team. And so I'm, I'm trying to tape the game and, and keeping up with the scores over there. Oh, oh can I just score? All right, good, yeah. we, we're in good shape. Good. So it, it's a trip. And so that's kind of how I'll be this weekend. You know, I, it's the biggest game of the year. And, and that's a whole different discussion. I don't like Air Force after it. Navy game should be the last game, period. Uh, right. not, even, not even just the last game of our season. It should be the last game of college football. You know, these guys, everybody else got pro careers. They got pro day. They got everything else ahead of them. But, you know, these guys have nothing else but uh, get under uh, height weight standards and get ready to go lead soldiers. <laughs> so let that be yeah. the last game. Don't schedule us SEC championship the same day as the Army Navy game. And now we got to split. No, everybody in the whole world needs to watch the Army Navy game. So, yeah, uh, a lot of emotions. A lot of I could talk all day. I tell you that. <laughs> yeah, it, it's it's been fun. Uh, it's been fun chatting with you and catching up. Lots of great stories. We got to do this again soon. And uh, really, really pe- appreciate the time, Demetrius. And uh, you know, it should it should be a it should be a fun Saturday. And, um, yeah, we don't like Air Force being scheduled after the Navy game, right? But that, that means if Army beats Navy this week, then that Commander-in-Chief's trophy is on the line uh, next Saturday. So that's, that's a, that will be a giant game. Not as big as Army-Navy, but a pretty big game. So uh, yeah. really appreciate the time. Thanks, thanks a lot, and I uh, look forward to talking to you soon. As always, I appreciate you as well.